So like always, I want to thank the media for coming out and covering Penn State football. I truly appreciate it, and I know our players do as well. Uh, I want to thank the fans. You know, this is always a challenging week for us over uh, Thanksgiving break. You know, obviously, we're down 45,000 students, um, and obviously, this is always a challenging weekend because of that, but we get unbelievable support. Unbelievable support. I think for the year, we averaged 107,000 fans for the year. Um, and it's special. You know, even, even today, m most programs in the country would die for the attendance that we get uh, on this Thanksgiving weekend. So that was awesome. I just thought we played really good complimentary football. Offense, defense, and special teams all made plays when we needed to. Early on in the game, I thought their punter was kind of the MVP. Uh, swing and field position, um, but you know we were able to make some adjustments offensively. We did start slow, but we were able to finish strong. We made plays when we needed to. Uh, we were able to mix the run and the pass uh, defensively. You know we continue to make plays all year long, and it, it played very very consistent. And then special teams, obviously, the big turnover late was big. Our tight ends had a big night for us. That's kind of been a theme, you know, pretty much all year long. And I thought Sean did what he, what he typically does. He manages the game extremely well, gets us into the right runs, gets us into the right protections, and makes the plays when he needs to. So it was also great to see Keandre have a big night, big touchdown catch, and obviously a touchdown throw. I thought that was a big time throw. So uh, overall, good night for us. I'm really proud you think about you know, where this team started in terms of how people talked about us you know, in preseason. Uh, to where we finished, uh, I would think inside the top 10 and at the end of the regular season, and then we still have one game left to play. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing where we'll, uh, where we'll end up. So, again, appreciate you guys. I'll open up the questions. James, how would you describe your offense's response after Michigan State cut it to 21-16 with that 75-yard drive? And can you describe what went into the thinking on going for it on fourth and two from the 12? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously that was a huge drive in the game. They had, they had gotten momentum, were able to, you know, get it down to a one-score game, obviously. So being able to answer there was a big-time drive. Not only did we go the length of the field, but we took a ton of, t took a ton of time off the clock as well, uh, which was really valuable. And then obviously going for it on fourth and two. I don't know if necessarily the coaching manual would have said that that was the right thing to do, but kind of how the game was playing out and missing some field goals early in the game, I just thought that was the, the right thing to do to be aggressive there. That package that we've been using all year out of 23 personnel, a lot of people are calling it T formation, uh, been really good to us. And obviously we have some, you know, we have some variety of things that we can do out of it, whether it's runs, whether it's play action pass, whether it's nakeds, or whether it's you know even exploding to empty like we did there. So, uh, yeah, I just actually with Brian Tripp on the radio, you know, just actually watched it, and it could have been even better because we ended up double teaming the one guy and left the the safety high, and it ended up working out well. But we really could have had them all blocked. It was our four against their three, and just from a numbers game, um, it worked out really well. So. It's like, it's like we talk about all the time when I come in here. You guys always think the fourth downs that work were good decisions and the fourth downs that don't work were bad decisions, and I agree with you. That one worked, so it was a good decision. Brennan? James, you talked on Tuesday about the senior class and everything that it's gone through. What did it mean to you to have it be able to finish the, the home uh, portion of its career kind of on this note? Yeah, their, their leadership has been unbelievable all year long. Um, you know, the vets in that locker room, I thought the captains were unbelievable all year long. Tremendous communication. Uh, transparency was great. Um, and they were aligned with the coaches, you know. And, you know, I got really good feedback from them. That, that doesn't mean I always necessarily agreed with them, but it was good for me to hear their feedback. So ultimately, I could make the best decisions for the organization. Uh, they were great. And those guys played well. And then they, you know, were thoughtful during the week, you know, with, uh, you know, the things that they said to their teammates, the things that they said to their coaching staff. So they, they were really good. And uh, I'm proud of them to be able to get this type of win. 
you know, late in the season. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is we just kept getting better all year long. Coach, what will this next week be like for you guys? Can you walk us through it with the dead period now instead of the opportunity to go out and recruit? And then how important will it be to be able to maximize that time with your players here between now and the bowl game? Yep, I'd probably have to check my phone to tell you the schedule literally is just going out right now. Kevin Threlkill uh, already has our entire schedule for the next two weeks. He already has our schedule set for every bowl game we could possibly play in. We always have those things mapped out ahead of time. We actually went over it with the captains last week uh, to make sure they were all on the same page with it. But uh, but they'll get a little bit of time off here over the next couple of days. Tomorrow's the first Sunday they'll have off, and then there's you know there's a new kind of transfer portal period where things shut down. Where we normally would go right on the road recruiting, we'll be in the office for three or four days, meeting with all the players, making sure we're all on the same page. Obviously, finding out what bowl we're going to, and then we'll get started practices. Um, before we know uh, necessarily who we're playing, we'll have a few practices um, and then get into bowl prep. But I don't, I don't have all the details and the specifics for you, um, but we'll, we'll communicate with you next time we see you. Neil. James, uh, you mentioned uh, during the week about the conference lobbying uh, for its teams. I'm just wondering what the process will be now between you and the administration um, you know, working with the Big Ten or, or trying to go to bat for uh, your bowl? Yeah, that'll be Pat. Pat, you know, I'm going to focus on meeting with our players, getting this, getting this uh, film graded, recruiting. Uh, I'll be all over that. Pat, Pat will handle all these things. Uh, he's got tremendous experience doing it. Um, you know, and I know the Big Ten will do everything they possibly can to, to help uh, all, the, all the teams kind of, you know, within the conference, get in the best situations we possibly can. You know, there was some interesting games last week. There was some interesting games this week that impact us uh, and put us in a more favorable position. But we'll see how it plays out. Donnie. James, with, uh, with hi, Donnie. With, how are you doing, James? Good. With Parker down, uh, how important was it to get Keandre going early with the pass, and then to, he he had the touchdown catch, and I, I think he he, had, he made a good catch on the, on the on the play to move the sticks there. How important was it to get him? kind of involved yeah I'm proud of him it hasn't always gone easy for him but he's he's really been resilient and battled through it uh, I think this bowl prep period is going to be really important as well we need to you know continue to you know continue to you know build kind of confidence uh you know with Sean and the receivers um so that we can go into the bowl game and be as explosive as we possibly can in the passing game um, there's things that we got to get cleaned up. Obviously, you know, Parker's an unbelievable player, and um, not having him, you know, it makes an impact. So some guys stepping up, and I think Keandre is a great example of that, and he was able to do it today. I thought it was a big-time throw. I mean, that was a big-time throw. He made somebody in his face and just laid that thing out in stride. And then obviously going down and, and making the big, you know, touchdown reception was big for us as well. So he's got a ton of ability. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited about the next step for him. James, uh, this is another game where Abdul Carter was all over the place, seems to be making timely plays as well. You've often called for game wreckers on your defense with the way you recruit and develop. It, has he reached that status here at the end of his freshman season? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let you guys decide that. Um, I'm proud of him. You know, he's, he's gotten better every single week. Um, as you can tell and you can see, he's – got a ton of natural physical ability and then he's getting more and more confident within the scheme um, which not only is helping our defense play better uh, but it's also putting him in position to make more and more plays but but his ability to burst um, and chase the quarterback or burst and, and chase you know running backs on the perimeter or within the box it's impressive. He's got a he's got the ability to find the ball, and when he gets there, he's got bad intentions. So, it's been fun to watch his development from the beginning of the year to now. I'm over here, James. Well, sorry. How important is you guys aren't sitting in your normal seats? There are no more normal yeah. seats. Yeah. yeah. Neil's There's usually too many, right there. Too many for normal seats. Yeah. Neil's usually right there. Dave's usually right there. How important is a New Year's Six bowl anymore? as opposed to, uh, you know, the third tier, perception-wise? Yeah, you know, obviously, you want to try to go 
to the biggest games you possibly can go to. Has it changed, Dave? Yeah, I think your point is a fair one. Um, and I think that's why there's so much talk about, you know, the expansion and the importance of the expansion. And I think there's been stuff that's been put out. If they go to a 12-game model, like everybody's saying it's going to happen, um, you know, how many times we would have had a chance to be in that. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I get your point. But, yeah, I think it's it's still important to go to the – biggest and the best games you possibly can in the postseason and whether that is a new year six bowl game or or whatever um there's still value in it but but i understand your point james um i'm in the same seat but when you kind of look at it, it you get joey porter back but then Kalen king is a really big game too what have both of those guys meant this year and getting joey back yeah they they've they've uh you know they i think you know, we make an argument. We got you know two of the best, if not you know three of the best corners in the country, or four of the best corners in the country. And uh, Kalen has played consistent really all year long. Um, Joey was playing as good as any corner in the country, and then obviously, as you guys know, he you know had a, a medical situation, which we announced what it was. And you know, I'm I'm proud of him. The fact that he was able to come back. You know, I wouldn't say he was full go today, but he was good enough to play and was cleared by the doctors and he wanted to get out there and and help his team so I think that speaks volumes about who he is and how much he loves the game um so you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm proud of those those guys and obviously to your point you know when Kalen's in there and Joey's playing and you know the way you know he's capable of playing when he's healthy you know we it allows us to do a lot of things defensively load the box stop the run challenge throws, um, you know, really, really talented, you know, duo on the perimeter for us, which obviously when you have that type of confidence, and not just him, you know, I could throw a bunch of guys in there when you talk about PBUs and interceptions and things like that, done a really good job all year long. And then on top of that, you know, they're willing tacklers. And, and that's not always the case at that position. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.